So now we're on this journey of we've we've got several businesses started, but none of them are really actually profitable at this point. Um, so I guess that's another huge aspect of this is watching the journey of like watching us failing forward as we try and get these businesses profitable. Um, so the, I think probably the two that are closest to profits or stability, um, is my boutique joyfully adorned. Um, the shirt now covered in cat hair, uh, is from there. Um, a lot of the clothes that you'll see me wearing on this, um, channel are from my boutique and, um, so we're gaining traction slowly, but figuring out how to run an online boutique when I don't feel good in clothes. Um, that's been a part of this confusing health journey is after I gave birth to Elle, um, I gained 30 pounds in three months and I like, we can't figure out why. Cause I was not eating in a way that like that would even remotely make sense. Um, and I was breastfeeding. So yeah, that's been super confusing. And, um, the weight gain has finally stopped. I didn't tell you that. No. Um, it did finally stop and is slowing. Um, we'll probably elaborate on what I'm doing health wise on another episode. Um, but I've kind of had to take matters into my own hands because the doctors are just like, they're being really slow about figuring it out. And I, after my whole life of doctors not being able to give me answers of why I feel so terrible and just kind of having to figure it out on my own, I guess I'm kind of just jumping the gun and doing that. So maybe we'll circle back to that, but joyfully adorned. Um, we are like, I guess, cause I don't feel good modeling the clothes. That's been a challenge is figuring out how to like sell that on social media and um, not necessarily because the clothes aren't flattering for me. It's just because I'm not comfortable in my body. Um, and that's, that's hard to say. Um, but hopefully we'll, I'm, I'm, we're actually making strides in figuring out what's going on with me and, um, how to get me better and get my body to work the way it should. So hopefully as that happens, we'll see some weight loss and find some more comfort in my body. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, that's been a challenge with Joyfully Adorned is how to promote my store when I don't want to model the clothes myself. Um, and then we have Moms of Heart, which is our nonprofit. Uh, that's just getting really firmly established. Um, we're like establishing our board right now. We've got our nonprofit corporation status. So it's it's been kind of going for a while, but really just firmly getting a foundation and the whole goal and mission of that, um, nonprofit is to, um, support families with kids with special needs, um, and disabilities or other medical challenges, um, wherever your family fits, but to really support the parents because the parent journey of having a kid with extra challenges, there's, there's just not a lot of support out there. And, so, excuse me, we have a podcast and a blog and um, a couple of resources available online, but our big thing that we're really working towards is building our team foundation and fundraising at this point so that we can host our first virtual conference um, to help families with all the different challenges involved with parenting a kid with extra needs. Um, and then you've got your business just about ready to start making some sense. Do you want to share a little bit about gaming with John? Yeah, uh, I'm starting a YouTube, well, I, I have a YouTube channel called Gaming with John, which I've been working on and off on, but I'm to the point where I can now, like, surgically figure out what I want to present on my channel I'll, like reviews on the ps5 review and retro systems um sharing gameplay sharing unboxings um really generating and building a community of gamers 
they can just chat about games in the comments and have fun watching some gameplay. Cool. So we'll be excited to see that begin to take off. Um, and then we have some other big dreams of doing some real estate investing and um, maybe some local businesses in town. Um, Ellendale is such a fun little town and there's so many opportunities available to serve this community. It's kind of going through this culture shift because there's a really large population of um, the older baby boomer generation and then there's this like growing population of our age with kids um, and then there's the like the college. So it just kind of makes for like a really unique town culture, especially for a town this size. Um, but there's definitely some really great opportunities to start a business here um, because it is such a small town. And a lot of the businesses seem to have closed recently, maybe even pre-COVID. And a lot of it's because like the owners died or things like that. So there's there's a lot of opportunity and a lot of ways to serve this community um, that just, it's not being served right now. So we have some fun ideas yeah. for the future for that. Um, I think ultimately what we, we as a family strive is to have a multifaceted income stream that can support our family no matter what, no matter what happens. Yeah, I think while COVID inadvertently brought us blessings, it's also, I think whether you're an employee or you have your own business, like it just kind of brings to light, like your income is never secure. And especially as a family with multiple kids, um, but also a kid with special needs, there's this drive to make sure that we have stable income from multiple sources that are kind of bulletproof. And so that no matter what happens economically or culturally, like we're, we're still going to be okay and still going to be able to support our kids. Cause I think that's the complicating factor is for Henry, at least he probably won't ever be able to have a traditional job. No. Um, and so we want to create a stable enough business that he can get involved and have, like, be okay. Yeah, I think fostering a culture where he can go out and basically make it on his own is important to his upbringing and well-being so that he, he can find the confidence to approach life as an adventure and not just I'm stuck in this place because I have this special need that's going on. Yeah. And I mean, we see a lot of that on social media of it really like limiting and hindering kids who are venturing into adulthood because they just like the box that kids are put in through the public school system of like, this is how you do life. It just doesn't fit for them. Yeah. And we definitely want him to be aware of his limitations so he's kept safe. But also to know when to push beyond what he thinks is his limits. Well, I think maybe it's looking at limits as like... Maybe it just means you have to do things differently. Because it's like, yeah, he doesn't fit into this square hole. He's limited by this jagged edge that he has, right? Yeah. But rather than saying, okay, I'm I just, I can't do life and now my life is stuck. Instead, I just need to like reshape how I'm going to try and fit through this hole. And then I can actually do so successfully if like I, I approach it in a different way. And maybe even thrive more than I would if I was shaped as a square. Yeah. And I think one of the things that we don't want to lose from Henry is the fact that he keeps saying, I'm going to be somebody someday. Yeah. It's so cute. when he does that, he keeps running around the house saying, I'm going to be somebody or no, I'm going to be someone. 
I'm gonna be someone. Yeah, I'm gonna be someone. And not to let his medical challenges limit his dreams and potentials of not being that someone. Thanks for watching this episode of Growing with the Grown Walls. We hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you know a family who has similar challenges to what we're facing and you think they would enjoy this episode, please share it with them. We're excited to connect with new families.